how do you get to Chicago? Well, you need two things. You need to know where Chicago is and you need to know where you are. Nothing strikes fear into the hearts of math students more than being asked how to do a proof. Now, that is a faulty premise. But what we're here to do today is to talk a little bit about some hints, give you some hints, some ideas of what you can do to make your proofs a little bit more doable. First of all, we need to make sure that both the premises and remember, those are the P's that we're anding together in order to get to our therefore Q to make sure our premises and the conclusion are concrete. And when I mean concrete, I mean to make them as solid as possible. Don't just simply say that A is odd. Say that A is 2K plus 1. So that if you've got some sort of an equation behind it, you're more likely to be able to, you know, Go know, know where you're starting from and where you're heading to. Use graphics. What do I mean by use graphics? Well, you could be, it could be anything from geometric shapes. So for example, if you're, you're proving Pythagorean's theorem, you need to have your right triangle and you need to have sizes and squares and so forth in order to prove it graphically to give you an idea of where you're headed for, how you're headed through the proof. But you could also look at that as number lines. For example, if you've got a number line, you know this is the range where our you know, premise lies and this is the range where our conclusion lies, you'll be able to see relative to each other how, those, how they work together. Uh, and similar to using graphics, be sure to make a model. Making models is, is really important. For example, there is a famous proof called the four color theory. And what it has to do is this idea of a map. And any map, what is the minimum number of colors that you need to have in order to make it so that no two countries that are touching each other or have the same color? Turns out it's four colors. The proof's more difficult than we're gonna go into right now, but I'll give you an idea of how you can model that. Let's say that I have a country, one country, and that country has another country that's near it. Now, of course, a country doesn't, is not shaped like a dot, but if I have two countries that are next to each other, I can connect them with a, with a line, right? And maybe there's a third country, and this country is touching both of those countries. And maybe there's a fourth country, and that country is touching all the rest of them. Now, the question is, if I have a fifth country, can I get all five of those countries to touch? Well, since there's a connection between these two and a connection between these two, there is no, and a connection between these outside two, there is no way I can draw a line to any of, uh, through any of those without passing through one of those borders and thereby disconnecting two of the countries. You know, this idea of being able to model these countries touching each other is also used in networking theory. So we'll talk a little bit about that later on in these lessons whenever it comes to directed and non-directed graphs. So modeling, modeling is a great way in order to get a better idea of how our proof is headed. Another one is make examples. Make examples. What do I mean by making examples? Well, let's say that I'm trying to prove that the addition of two odd numbers always is an even number. Now, I could just kind of work through the proof but I could also start out by adding a whole bunch of odd numbers together and seeing what sort of pattern it makes, seeing if I can recognize any sort of, of, of tool or, 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 or characteristic that I can use in my proof. And the last one that I'm going to write down here, there are plenty more uh, hints for making proofs, but here's my last one. Don't get discouraged. <laughs> Even after the first try, the second try, the third try, the fourth, however many tries, try not to get discouraged because for a lot of proofs, there has been a lot of attempts over and over again that have been unsuccessful before we reach the final attempt that worked. So 
I'm going to try and prove something. I'm going to prove that if A and B are elements of the positive integers, in other words, there are one, two, three, five, you know, not zero or negative, but positive integers, and a and B are consecutive. What does it mean to be consecutive? Well, it means that though that if A is if A is an integer, then B is A plus one. It's right after it. Now, what did I say whenever I said let's see if we can't make it concrete? Well, making this concrete would say A and B are related by saying that B is equal to A plus one. And what I'm going to say is that if they are uh, positive integers and they are consecutive, then A times B is even. What do I mean whenever I say A times B is even? Well, that means that A times B equals 2K for some integer K, right? Let's start out with a direct proof. How does our direct proof look? Well, remember, what the direct proof says is we start out with our premise and then we work our way down to the eventual conclusion. So, A times B equals, well, I've already said that based on this, that B is equal to A plus one. So A times B is A times A plus one, right? Now, if I multiply those together, I get A squared plus A. Now, if you look back at our previous videos, there were some proofs that we had come up with. So, for example, if A is even, then A squared is even, right? So, let's look at it this way. If A is even, then if A is even, A squared is even. And then a squared, which is even, plus a, which is even. We also know that if a and b are even, then a plus b is even. All right, those were all proofs from our previous lesson. So we've got the one case that if a is even, then a squared is even and a is even, add them together, the result is even. So if we're looking at this case right here where a is even, then we do see that p implies q. In other words, this is true. So we've got half of it figured out, right? Once again, we're working our way south. Now, if a is odd, then a squared is odd, right? Also a proof that we did in a previous uh, lesson. Now, if A is odd, then A squared is odd, and what you have is an odd number plus an odd number. And so if A and B are odd, then A plus B is even. And so we see now that this is true, that this is the, 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 the premise follow the conclusion follows the premise if A is odd, even, and if A is odd, which means that by direct proof, we've proved that A times B is even. Now let's do proof by contradiction. And if you remember, the proof by contradiction said that P and not Q implies not P. This was the same thing. So P and not Q implies not P was equivalent to, was logically equivalent to P implies Q. So what do we do here? Well, we assume, first of all, that a and B are consecutive, all right? We've already said that that means that B is equal to A plus one. Now, what we're gonna then assume is that A times B is odd. This is the not Q. So these two statements, this is P, this is not Q. 
So that's this portion here. And so what we want to do is show that not P. We want to show a contradiction. So we're going to start this out just like we started out the other one. So A times B is equal to A times A plus 1, which is equal to A squared plus A. We've already done that, right? Now, since A times B is odd, then we know that there's an integer K such that 2K plus 1 is equal to A times B. So we have A squared plus A is equal to 2K plus 1 for some integer K. Now, if we massage this around and show that 2K is equal to A squared plus A minus 1, in other words, all we're doing is we're moving that 1 over to the other side of the expression, and we see that 2K must be, since k is an integer, 2k has got to be even. That means that this has to be even. Now, we already showed in the last proof that a squared plus a for both even numbers and odd numbers are even. So we know that a squared plus a is even which means that a, since a squared plus a minus 1 is also being asked to be even, we know that that won't work. There's our contradiction right there. We're asking a squared plus a minus 1 to be even and a squared plus a also to be even. We know that a squared plus a is even, so this can't possibly true be true. And since this is a contradiction, and since we know that we made proper steps through here, that means that our assumptions must be incorrect, and therefore this has been proved true. And the last one, proof by contrapositive. Now, if you remember, the proof by contrapositive said that P implies Q if and only if not Q implies not P. And so the idea is that we are going to assume Q bar. We're going to assume the not of this. So we're going to start out by assuming A times B is odd, right? That's the, that, is the, that is the not, the negation of our Q. So that means that A times B is equal to 2K plus 1 for some integer K, right? Well, since a is an int, right? Then B must divide 2K plus 1. You know, we go back to that idea that whenever we talked about earlier about factoring, right? And we showed that, that basically 2K plus 1, that value right there, that integer right there, is made up of the multiplication of, or the product of, A and B, which means B is a factor of 2K plus 1. And since B is an integer, A also must divide 2K plus 1. And so, since 2k plus 1 is odd, all divisors must be odd. We also proved that earlier. We proved that earlier by showing that, first of all, if one of the divisors is even, then it has a factor of 2, which means that this 2k plus 1 also must have a factor of 2. Well, when have you last seen two odd numbers that are consecutive? So, since odd numbers are not consecutive, that gives us not Q implies not P because because P required A and B to be consecutive and therefore P implies Q. All right. So there you have it. We have really proved that if A and B are consecutive positive integers, then A times B is even. We've done it a number of ways. This just goes to show that there's more than one way to get from here to Chicago.